I promised that I would do a little Dutch pour using nothing but the very basic ingredients, basic recipe, no silicon today, no flow troll, no fancy business, just paint and water. So for anybody who hasn't tried a Dutch pour yet or who is struggling or is a bit scared of it, and it is a bit scary, or something like itself, uh, I'm gonna just do one, a very, very simple one, keep it to the, just pare it right down and we'll do it and we'll see if we can get a great result. Um, I'm hoping, hoping that we will get something like this. This is one that I've done, uh, that I did a little while ago. Uh, just paint and water, I, it has been varnished and glittered, but I'm hoping to replicate something similar to that today for you to show you it's actually not too difficult. You wanna make sure that it's as, before you start, like at this point, make sure it's as even in that fill tray as possible because when you start blowing the paint around, it's gonna slip and slide off. So you need to make sure that all of that paint is gonna end up in your tray, not in your kitchen table, not on your floor, because apparently the family don't like it. So, there you go. So, next we need to level the canvas. You've gotta make sure that it's as level as possible. So get yourself a little level, you can have a little, little tiny one like this, or one like this, doesn't really matter. Just have a good old look, just to check that it's as level as it can, that it's as level as it can be. Actually, I'm gonna the big one for this. Because that's gonna give you the most chance of your pour setting without spilling, without spilling over, without distorting too much. You don't want distortion if you can avoid it. Uh, and if you do need to level it, then you can just get some, get your little stir sticks. Hopefully you've got some of them on you. Little lollipop sticks or anything. Maybe even the wedges from the, um, the canvases, because they all come with these wedges, don't they? These mysterious wedges. So now the paints. Um, I've just got regular, I've got my paint, these paints from the range. Any old paints will do, any old acrylic paints will do. Make sure they're acrylic paints. And I got this one, which I quite liked from Hobbycraft, I think I got this. I wouldn't normally go to Hobbycraft, it's a little bit more expensive. So pick your paints, I've just got three colours here. And I've got, I've just put a little dollop in three little, three little tubs. Stir sticks, splodge your paint, tubs, we're, we're golden, ready to go. Nothing fancy, I'm going to get my gloves on and then we're ready. So you just need your paint, your pots, and some water, and that is it. Simples. Quick tip with the gloves, if you have them, if they get all sticky and hot and sweaty, I hope that's not just me, uh, if you want to get them off and they're stuck and you can't move them, blow into them. <sighs> and then it makes it much easier for them to be pulled off. Okay, so we're good. Water, plain old water. We're just gonna do a little squizzle start stirring. This is the boring bit. Ah! See, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to accidentally fling your stick onto your water bottle. <laughs> That's not ideal. Little splurge at a time. And mix. Take your time, see it as therapy. Think about your life. Where's it going? Where's it been? What in fact is the point of anything? over this video. Drowning out the sound of me nattering on. This is when you decide that your gloves are sticky. Sticky. Okay. All right, so consistency. Let's talk about consistency. Consistency is a nightmare. Consistency is your worst enemy because it's all about the consistency. You are aiming 
for all of your colours to be the same consistency or as close as you can get it. Whether that's warm honey, I haven't, I don't know about the warm honey thing, only because, surely, how warm is warm? And the warmer you go, your honey's gonna change consistency, am I wrong? Or am I right? I must try, I'm gonna heat up some honey. Right, so when I get them sort of roughly, the consistency, that's when I tend to go a little bit slower with the water. I don't want it so runny that the pigment breaks down and that it's like liquid water, but I don't want it so thick that I can see, I can see it pooling on the top when I lift my stick out. However, I do think that I like, I tend to like it a little bit runnier than I see a lot of YouTubers do, a lot of YouTube videos do. That is perfect for me. I don't see it pooling on the top, and yet it's still got a little bit of gumption to it. So we're gonna to go to the next one. If it's too thin, your paint will, it will, it will flow across the canvas better, but you will lose your colour definition a little bit. And if it's too thick, then it won't flow across the canvas enough and it'll get stuck. Equally, this is why we use white on the canvas first. If you don't use white on the canvas first, if you were to just do your Dutch pour on a plain canvas, which hasn't got white on it, white paint on it first, then your paint is gonna to struggle to move across the canvas. It looks quite dramatic and the colours will be nice and strong, but it just won't move as far. Whereas if you put your white base of paint down and cover the whole canvas first, it's much, much easier for all of those beautiful colours to move across the canvas. It's still very hit and miss. It's still always gonna be experimental. I've done experiments where I've used the same colours, the same method across three canvases and each one has come out wildly different but you do not need to have Floetrol in your paint. I love Floetrol, but you don't need to have Floetrol in your paint and you don't need to have silicone in your paint in order to get cells. You really don't. <sighs> you fast forwarded yet? I wish I could fast forward. You've got to put your water in a little bit at a time because otherwise you will break. You'll break the magic. You want that water to really integrate well with the paint. And you're not you're not whipping it up. You don't really want to whip air into it because then you're just gonna get air bubbles. You will get air bubbles in anyway, which we'll deal with with the torch. Talk about the torch in a second. Um, but you do need to stir it really, really well. And if you let your paint sit overnight, then you'll need to restir the next day because they will change consistency overnight. You can count on it. As long as you cover your paints up and you put them, you've got a little lid for your tubs, then they'll last for weeks and weeks and weeks. But you do then have to restir them and probably add more water uh, because they do change consistency overnight, week to week month to month. I've got paints here that have lasted months. So, you know, you don't waste it. It will keep as long as you cover it up. Okay, that's good. Last one. This beautiful colour. What else about the colours? What I found is that when I use metallic colours like golds and silvers with the regular colours, it can, it's always a struggle to get the metallics to show up. They really do require some, some TLC because they have a different 
different consistency, different makeup to the standard colours and they behave differently. So quite often, because they're heavier, they sink. So all of your colours, if they're not, that goes for all of your colours, if they're not the same consistency, then the heavier colours, the ones that don't have as much water in, they're going to sink underneath the other colours. And it's all fine. It sinks, it doesn't sink, it's all fine. Okay, so that's really good. That needs a little twizzle more. That definitely needs a twizzle more. I'm hoping that that blue will break through and really lift. I'm thinking these two are going to dominate. My blues never, my light blues never dominate. Okay, white base. For the white base, we're going to just keep it really, really simple. We're just going to use paint and water again. I've just got this cheap paint from the works. It's just graduate titanium white. Don't always use titanium white, it just happens. I've got a couple of these here. So I'm going to start mixing these up. I'm just going to use a jar and a long coffee stirrer. I've tried lots of different things, but these long coffee stirrers are great. They are actually fabulous. Uh, so let's get cracking. Take that out. Again it's just going to be very simple mixing. No flow troll, no silicon, no gack. What was gack? I've heard of gack. I haven't experienced it myself yet. Gack. Do this. Beautiful. Let's do the other one as well. Oh, it'll be fine. Always do a little bit more than you think you need because there's nothing worse. generous with the water on these. There's something very therapeutic about all this. White. We want to get it nice and smooth. We're stirring, we're not whipping, so we don't want to get too much air in there. I'm going to stand up and just So I would say it's definitely slightly thicker than single cream, but I'm going to get some cream. Next time I do a video, I'll get some cream. I'm inserting this clip separately into this video because I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be great if there was a standardised way of testing the thickness of your paints? So I went shopping at Sainsbury's, like you do, know, and uh, I have a little selection here of uh, liquids. And I thought I'd test them just to see if anything relates to the thickness that I'm using. Obviously everybody uses their own thicknesses, their own consistencies of paint, but I just thought that I would do an experiment so instead of talking about it, I would actually find something that is kind of unified. Anyone can go to the shop, they can pick a, pick something up and go, oh yeah, it's supposed to be this, or it will work if it's this thickness. Not it's supposed to be, obviously, no rules. Um, so I started paint pouring under the impression that single cream thickness would do it, but no. Turns out single cream is too runny. Too runny, too runny, too runny. So then I thought, oh, double cream. Double cream's definitely got the edge on single cream, but no, still too runny. And then, because I'm an idiot, 
I picked up sour cream instead of extra thick double cream. So completely pointless because obviously as delicious as sour cream is, and we all know it, uh, that ain't gonna work. So then I thought, okay, runny honey, no, warm honey. So this is warm honey, and I guess I see, I see what people mean about the raw honey, but warm honey, but it doesn't quite work for me just because I suppose I'm just, I see everything so visually, I want it to be white. So, can you get white honey? Stupid question. So I'm still on the lookout. I'm gonna try extra thick cream next and I'll let you know how it goes. I just didn't have it because I bought the sour cream instead. Guess what I'll be having for dinner tonight? Let's have a tool. So now we're gonna pour the, we're gonna cover our canvas in white. We're gonna make sure it's covered around the sides so that when we then put, pour the colors on and blow them, they can stretch as far as they can and they carry on down the side. And if you've got white paint around the side, then it will help it do that. If you haven't got any paint on the side or you've got gaps, then it, the paint may stick. It's harder for the paint to flow. So we're gonna pour our white on and then we're gonna even it out. You can use lots of tools to even it out. This is the fun bit. Um, what I don't tend to do now is pick the canvas up and tip and tilt it because then you might not have it level again when you pop it back down. So I say, once it's down, if you can, leave it down. I'm gonna stand up for this. You don't need to see my, my fat face, do you? All right, here we go. We're gonna pour it on. Where? The ball. And then we're gonna smooth it out. With a palette knife. This is the fun bit. You don't have to worry about it being all, you know, blobby and uneven because over time, all of that paint will sink into the canvas and it'll be nice and flat. So don't panic or don't think, don't worry if it looks blobby. Really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna make sure that I've got paint around the sides. that I think I've missed. I'm just gonna go around with my finger just to make sure it's all covered. Wonderful, easy peasy. Tissue is always very important so you can keep as tidy as possible. Next thing is move any tissues out of the way because when you use your hairdryer, your hairdryer will blow everything everywhere. And I usually scream at that point because it's then I remember that I haven't moved everything everywhere. So we've got our canvas covered. Now we've got some little air bubbles there. Now I would say if you're getting into paint pouring, get yourself one of these, just do it, okay? Don't faff about. This is the easiest way to get the air bubbles out of your paint and you want to get them out at this point. So you can get them from Amazon. They're not that expensive, but they really, really do help. You can do it in other ways, but this is the simplest. You've got enough stuff to deal with when you're doing paint pouring without faffing about. So this is the easiest way to get rid of your air bubbles. See? Done. Done. Now that's done, we are ready. We are ready to go. Right, so not centre, slightly off centre. You can do what you want. No rules, remember. We're gonna be nice and gentle. It doesn't matter if there's blobs. It doesn't matter if there's blobs and dollops. It really, really doesn't. Blue and pink, what's gonna happen? I have no idea. Let's see. I'm being pretty generous. Because if you don't have enough paint on the page, on the canvas, They'll just end up with a lot of white, which is also fine because there are no rules. I'm just gonna be generous because why not? All right, I'm gonna go blue again, and then I think that's it. Oh, do you know what? 
I'm just going to do a little bit of pink around here. Why not? Because what did I say about rules? No rules. What I am going to do is I'm going to very briefly torch because I can see a couple of little air bubbles. Don't do too much. Now we do our circle of white. We tend to want to a little bit more on the inside where the majority of the canvas is on the outside because that's the white that we need to lift over. That's it. And we're ready. We're ready to blow. So ready? Here we go. When you get the hairdryer on, I always say to people, make sure you cover the nozzle because otherwise things just fly everywhere. Okay. You can see that I've blown the white over. I haven't gone quite far enough, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. And you can see the cells coming up. I've got absolutely no flow troll, no silicon there. It's all the paint uh, reacting with the other colours. And let's go back. Now let's give it a little torch. The torch helps the reactions to uh, keep on forming and it helps the cells to form. So that is pretty good. It hasn't got um, the amount of cells that my other green one has that I showed you earlier, but that might be because I had different combinations of colours and they might have been slightly thinner than I've got here but let's give this a few minutes and see see how it looks in a few minutes time. So I think what's happened is I think it's the white that has stifled the cells so I think the white's not up to it so I'm going to do the same experiment I might switch up the colours a bit but I'm going to do the same experiment with a different white that I have and we'll see how the results differ.